Good morning. It's Monday, November 14th, and that means exactly two, count them, two things. Uh, first off is that your horoscope is absolutely messing with you, and the second thing is that it is time for the Lighting Industry News Brief, and that is brought to you by Keystone Technologies. We're talking about high-power, versatile flood lights. You know what they have? They have power select. They have color select. They have a photo cell in the box. The mounts, two kinds in the box. That comes with a dependable Keystone driver as well. That This is flood lights made easy. You can go to keystonetech.com or just visit the link in the description of this show. Into the news, however, Acuity is divesting Winona Custom, which is to say uh, the entire brand's going to be discontinued. Any orders that were approved before the end of the year will be fulfilled, but the architectural brand will not be taken on any new work. Ledvance is opening a new distro center in Pennsylvania, uh, specifically the town of Easton. Could be up and running as early as December 1st, but expect full steam by 2023. Lightspec West is also going to be a biennial event, but their next show is 2024, which means they're going to go opposite Light Fair, which would have been awkward otherwise, right? It would be really weird if, you know, they, they pick the same year. We have a recall from Hunter Fan. 41 different lighting products present a shock hazard. Uh, FSG has brought Capital Architectural Signs, the whole company, not just the signage. Uh, IES has updated RP43, which is the recommended practice practices for exterior lighting. Uh, Visual Comfort is building a new distro center in Spartanburg, South Carolina. This is a $62 million warehouse and distribution facility. Uh, the railway strike has been delayed until at least December. Uh, in Q3, news from Energy Focus, the outlook is bad. 35% drop in sales. The CEO has planned cost-cutting measures. Lynx and Outdoor Living will be rebranding as Empower Brands. Uh, GE, comma, Savant has won the Omni Shopper Award for their product display iMark presents their distinguished performance prizes to their members and suppliers. It's been a good year for a couple of people. U.S. commercial building energy use has fallen 12% between 2012 and 2018. Semi-LEDs raked in $3.4 million in revenue over the last two quarters. LSI's margins are up by 27%. And the ICC has a new decarbonization solution for builders of new buildings. Uh, Orion's Q2 revenues are down $17 million. Uh, BOE has invested in Semitech. They are now the largest shareholder in the Chinese chipmaker. Uh, Signify admits that UVC sales are slumping and that they feel the whole tech field is obsolete. NECA's CEO visits the White House, uh, not on tour, but as part of a infrastructure workforce development talk. LED Ibund's CEO, CTO, and CFO, as well as a couple of board members, have bought shares in the company, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth each, as a matter of fact. Lowe's is leaving Canada, uh, selling all their locations to a PE firm for about $400 million in cash. The Electro Federation of Canada is presenting their Women in Tech scholarships to two students entering engineering school. And Signify Vietnam is announcing new green tech initiatives, including 3D printed smart lamps. In legal news, the Federal Circuit Court Board uh, has, you know, affirmed the appeals board on AMP versus DMF. But there's one claim they need to revisit, so the case is reopened, at least on that. In Rep Agency News, Lumos Controls has picked BR Lighting and Controls in the Cincinnati region of Ohio. In Event News, Leducation wants you to be worried about scammers. Just 
pay attention to which hotels and attendees are sending you what emails. Uh, there is an International Day of Light planned on May 16th. You can register now. That's through the Good Light Group. Arc Light September event next year is calling for speakers until January 16th. In IoT news, uh, the CEO of Glamox will pivot the company's data collection plans. We have um, an announcement that the Matter Standards documentation has been downloaded 4,400 times, which they like. Uh, Nanoleaf will not be embracing Matter yet. In Velmont related news, they have joined the Smart Cities Council. And Johnson Controls has partnered with Asthma and Allergy Foundation to partner on indoor air quality in schools. In recommended reading, I should say this is all recommended on nail.org. It's not on the final, but if you bring it up in your essay question, the graders will look favorably upon it. We can talk about room level data for energy management. We have a case study on a net zero home. We have opportunities in home energy management. We have efficiency fighting climate change. We have smart cities and the need for real-time data processing. We have daylight saving time, which still happens despite all expert advice. We have four IoT cybersecurity methods. We have four trends in IoT for next year. We have IoT for sustainability. We have matter only solving one smart home issue. And we have the question of the blockchain for IoT security. How about not? I should mention that November is Cybersecurity Month. Maybe that's why we're talking about a little bit more right now. Uh, we have the question of how and when to ask your neighbor to turn off their lights. We have recapping the Resilient Harvest Conference in photos. We have a breakdown of the non-residential lighting in the Pacific Northwest and what DST's end would do to sleep. In market projections, smart poles will hit 11% in growth, 12% gains in Zigbee automation, a $51 billion value projected into outdoor lighting. We have 7% gains in lighting contactors, $13 billion for solar street lighting, 11% grow gains for, sol for smart buildings, LED production equipment will reach just not like 455 million in value quite soon. We have indoor farming growing by 28%, a 7% expansion in track lighting and LED lighting overall will reach $91 billion in value. In R&D, we have Penn State creating a smart shading system for outdoor conditions and daylighting bonuses. Yu Paterborn has created a bioplastic specifically for lenses based on lactic acid that will be biodegradable. We have photometric characteristics in hybrid solar lighting from Korea. We have daylight boosting cognitive function in maze running rats. Once again, that does transfer a little further, but mice, rats, they, they like daylight when they're doing things. <coughs> and we have a new nanoparticle study from the PNNL discussing near-infrared dots in bioimaging and sensing. In Dark Sky News, circadian disruption linked to immune response. The link is that if your circadian system is disrupted, you don't have an immune response. We have a new citizen science study planned for a light pol pollution data gathering project. The South Carolina coast has had its second best year for turtle nesting on record. Uh, Caltrans is rolling out new signage for Julian and its dark sky status. Central Colorado's Humanist Society is hosting dark sky speakers. Bend, Oregon is 7% brighter every year. Tim McIntosh is beginning a project to secure dark sky certification for the Columbia Valley in BC. That's Canada. In horticultural news, a 72-acre berry greenhouse is ex experimenting with lighting as part of a new dynamic system to grow strawberries. 
grow generation's revenues have dropped 39% in the last quarter. In People News, Mary Celine Gendron has been tapped as a regional sales director at Ouellet Canada. Uh, Steve Joffre is now the new East Coast director of sales at Nora. Chris Lubeck is joining Evluma as their national sales director. Jim Richardelli has been named to the board of directors at Galco. Edison Report has announced a slate of promotions across the entire company. Tim Hyber is now the CFO at Gordon Electric Supply. John Geegan has been appointed as VP of Agency Sales and Marketing at Experience Brands. Steve Griffith is now on the Federal IoT Advisory Board. In local news, Minneapolis, Minnesota will be investing $9 million in new street lighting. Minnetonka has handed out their sustainability awards. Benton Parks have received TAP infrastructure grants from the government of Arkansas. Ephratra, Washington school districts have secured funding for upgrades. If you or anyone you know were, have been at Camp Lejeune recently, you should know that they're installing a microgrid. Um, Jardine Alley in St. John, Newfoundland is getting decorative lighting strings. Alabama is planning new statewide grants for efficiency across the board. TPG Orlando has won an award for their ability to install it all holiday lights in Florida. Camden, New Jersey is getting $36 million in federal infrastructure funds. Some of that's for the port, some of that's for the city. And Wrigley Field is going LED. Do we need a sports page? Leave, let me know in the comments. In international news, Kiev will be banning holiday lighting displays, as will Exeter in the UK. Holzerken in Bavaria, Germany, will have those but not street lamps because they set their own priorities. And Switzerland is offering efficiency grants overseas. Huh. In Things You Can Do, we have a test for LED diffusers and a plywood lamp. You can also observe light pillars based on ice crystals acting as reflectors of surface lighting at night in the Alberta Rockies. And a reminder that Edison Report No Space is different from the Edison Report with spaces because Randy Reed is just a cinnamon bun of a person and not associated with any sort of electioneering or investigation into conspiracies because, come on, of all the visible lighting personae, Randy is the bottom of the list to be involved in anything conspiratorial. Give your butt a hug. But until next time, I've been Scott Walker. Thank you to Nailed. Thank you to our sponsors at Keystone. And thank you for listening. Please enjoy your week. Please enjoy this music. <laughs>